Welcome back to my living room studio uh, for some yoga today. Um, for today's class, uh, if you have a, well, yeah, everybody should probably have a blanket or some kind of cushion. You can grab that. Um, and if you have two yoga blocks, um, it would be great to grab those. Um, if you don't, that's okay. I will um, make some modifications for that. And so when you've gathered all of that up, let's close our eyes and just come into our bodies, into the present moment. Letting your eyes close or taking a downward gaze if that feels more comfortable, just finding a comfortable seat. Just begin to tune into your breath. You don't have to change it. Breathing in, breathing out. Beginning to settle. Starting to become aware of what's happening inside. And doing a little body scan, checking in with your, finding your feet, scan up from the feet into the lower legs, into the knees, the thighs, the hips and pelvis, the abdomen, the spine, the whole torso up into the chest, the shoulders, the arms, all the way down to the hands, coming back up to the shoulders again, to the neck, to the head. See if you can let your forehead smooth out and relax, let your jaw be soft. Maybe starting to deepen your breath a bit. Just really becoming aware of how your body's feeling. Noticing how it's all connected. Tuning into all the sensations that you're aware of. Observing and watching the thoughts and feelings and emotions that go in and out of your mind. Resisting the urge to cling on to positive ones and trying to push away the negatives. Just sort of acknowledge everything and just allow it to be. They'll float in, they'll float out. Just being a witness to those thoughts as they arise. And finally, just allowing this moment to be just as it is. Allowing yourself to be just as you are in every moment. No competition with yourself or with others. Just awareness and mindfulness. Let's take one deep breath in and then let it all out. All right. So um, let's do a little wrist stretch here because we're going to be doing uh, um, some things in tabletop and doing a little wrist uh, work today. So 
if you bring your hands to prayer position, let's reverse that. So bringing the backs of the hands together, you can just come from here and peel and bring the backs of the hands together, or you can do, let's see, you could do like a fancy, you can bring the palms to, or the backs of the hands together and then bring the fingers pointing up towards the ceiling. And keeping the backs of the hands together, see if you can lower the forearms a little bit, lower the hands down. But if the backs of the hands start to peel away, then you've gone a little bit too far. You might need to come back up a little bit more. And then also being mindful of how your wrists feel. If your wrists are saying, hey, uh, then, you know, come up a little bit more. We just want a gentle kind of a feeling. Um, seeing if you can bring the hands in a little bit closer to the chest. So if you happen to notice that the fingers are pointing in towards you, see if you can direct them up towards the ceiling a little bit. And then also bringing the thumb, seeing if you can widen the thumbs out away from the hands, giving a little bit of a thumb stretch there. Taking a little bit of breath here. And then release that, might shake the hands out. Maybe even give a little pull. Some wrist circles, hand circles. And then stretch your feet out and, okay, and uh, we're going to do a little bit of foot movements. So extend the feet back and then curl the toes down, then point the feet down, then lift the toes back and then flex the, the feet back, then point the toes, point the feet flex the toes back and flex the feet. Curl toes, point feet, flex toes, flex feet. And so you can continue doing that slowly or you could mindfully see if you can speed it up a little bit more, making it kind of like a wave. We'll call this sort of like foot salutations. So it's a little bit of a waking up of the feet and the ankles, the legs. And so, let's see, next time you have, you're in a pointed feet position, keep the feet pointed, then flex the feet, but the toes are curled, then flex the toes, then point the toes, but keep the, or excuse me, point the feet, keep the toes back, then curl the toes, feet are pointed, flex the feet, flex the toes. Imagine that you're pointing the feet down, now point your toes, curl the toes under, and then, so now we're going the opposite way. It's kind of a gentle wavy motion, kind of brings the brain into it a little bit too, sinking everything together. All right, so then shake that out, and then we're going to split the toes and the, the, the big toe. So keeping the big toe back, see if you can start to take the, the other four toes down, okay? Then bring it back up. Then see if you can take the toes down to keep the, the, the big toes down and the other toes up. And then back and then switch. If you feel any cramping, you know, you can just pause for a second and just do a little wiggle out. But as you do this more, and I suggest it's a good thing to do, you'll start to notice less of the cramping. So just be easy on yourself if this is the first time you've ever done this. And people have different flexibilities in their feet and toes. So just, again, be mindful and just give it a try. You know, maybe every day. You don't have to do it for a very long time. All right, so that's a little bit there. Okay, so let's come to our hands and knees. So if you've got anything underneath you, move it out to the side. Um, and knowing also if you'd like to go ahead and put the, the blanket underneath the knees, since we'll be on the knees, depending on what sort of surface you have, you can go ahead and do that. So coming to tabletop position, let's um, put the hands underneath the shoulders, and we're gonna do some shoulder blade circles. So the idea is going to be keeping the arms straight, so trying not to sink into the elbows. So keeping the, the arms straight, see if you can sink your upper body down in between those arms so the shoulder blades slide together. 
So we're just going to do shoulder, let's say shoulder blade push-ups for the moment. So, and then allow, see if you can widen the space in between the shoulder blades, pushing yourself up, keeping those arms straight, and then see if you can gently lower your body in between, bringing the shoulder blades together, and then pushing into the floor, seeing if you can create space in between the shoulder blades, bringing yourself all the way up. And so once you've got that, then see if you can create some shoulder blade circles. So we're trying to just let the shoulders, shoulder blades create the movement. So there's not going to be too much movement within the rest of the body or the hips and everything. This is another little mind teaser. And so do a few in one direction and then see if you can reverse the direction. So today we're going to be doing a lot of focus in between this shoulder blade area in the thoracic spine. So we're just sort of warming up the area because this area tends to get kind of stuck from time to time. Okay, so then sit yourself back lean back almost as if you were coming into child's pose but keep those arms and fingers stretched out in front of you so feeling a stretch and then walk your fingers and hands over to let's see i'm going to my right so go over just as far as you can feel a stretch in the left side and you want to try to keep your shoulders straight so don't try to get as much stretch as you can be like oh i can come all the way over just Work until you feel a little bit of stretch, and then breathe into the left side of the ribs, seeing if you can keep your shoulders level. Taking a couple of breaths. And then walking your hands back in towards the center, and then coming over to your left side now, coming until you feel a bit of a stretch. I feel it through the arm, you know, a little bit below the armpit area. So coming until you feel that stretch, and then take some deep breaths, feel it into the side rib, into the right side of the ribs. All right, and then walking your hands back in towards the center, come back up to tabletop, and we're going to do a little bit of a active threading the needle, but we're not going to rest our head and shoulders. So take your left hand out to the side, just about uh, parallel to the floor, and then thread it through underneath your right arm. You can come down, coming all, almost all the way down, as if someone was pulling, just lengthening this uh, left arm, and then come back up and bring that arm out to the side, and then thread it underneath, remembering to breathe as you do this, stretching, reaching, feeling that in between the shoulder blades, feeling that reach, coming back up, and then threading on back under, almost like someone is gently pulling on your left hand. And then coming back up and one more time, thread it through, coming down. And then arm comes back out to the side and then down. And then we'll do the other side. So bring your right arm out to the side and then thread it through coming almost all the way down, but reaching, and then coming back up, arm comes out to the side, and then reach, reach through, feel that stretch in the back and between the shoulder blades and that thoracic rib area, thread it through, coming back up, and then once more, reaching underneath, your left arm, reach, 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 and then coming back to center to tabletop. And so then let's make a, a mindful spinal roll. So this is going to be a bit like a uh, cat dog, but we're going to make it very slow. So starting from the tailbone, start to curl your tailbone under and vertebra by vertebra, imagine that you're feeling each one light up as you roll, as you gently curl, 
And as you come up in between the shoulder blades, press your palms into the floor so that you feel the shoulder blades spreading. And then when you're all the way rolled this way, then again, begin at the tailbone and start to curl your tailbone up. And then again, sort of vertebra by vertebra, see if you can mindfully Start to unroll, start to unroll, start to unroll. Coming all the way up. And then once more, start at the tailbone, curl that tailbone under, curl, slow, mindful, checking in with the spine. Sometimes we just don't, well, many times we just don't really think about all the little segments of the spine. And then again, roll your way out. But sometimes it can be good to check in. See what kind of movements you might be able to create. All right, then come back to neutral spine and just give a little wiggle. If you need to take a moment, sit back, do a little wrist wiggle, that's okay. And then sit back, oh, curl your toes under if that feels okay for you. If not, it's okay. I think if you um, come down to the, uh, to just flat feet, but see if you can curl your toes under and then come down to um, your forearms with your fingertips facing forward and bring your right hand to uh, the middle of the chest. And so then with your left arm, press down into that elbow so that you rise up. You don't want to be sunk down into it. So nice, creating some nice space in that left shoulder. Then you're just going to slightly twist. And this is a twist that's in between the shoulder blades in the thoracic spine. And then come back down and then open out and so the um, imagine that you're trying to take your the back of your hand and almost point it towards the, the wall over to the side of you and then come down so we're just this isn't going to be a very big movement but it's going to create some big dividends for the loosening up in the thoracic spine in between the shoulder blades so just do a couple of these We'll do one more, open, and then come back down, reset, press that right forearm and elbow into the floor, bring your left um, hand to the middle of the chest, and then creating some height here, don't sink down, you're going to open up and then come down. So you might even as you open, see if you can keep your belly on contacting with your thighs. So you don't want to take the whole body, you don't want to wrench the hips and everything. You just want to have a mindful feeling in the back. Tuning in with your body, where you're feeling things. And we'll do one more. All right, coming back down, coming back up, perhaps doing a little spinal wiggle, spinal roll. And if you've got those blocks, go ahead and bring them out in front of you. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna place our elbows onto the blocks, place our palms together. And if you don't have the blocks, it's okay. You can place your elbows on the floor. You could also use, perhaps bring a chair or maybe if you have like a little step stool, you could bring it out in front of you, you can put the elbows on that. So put the elbows onto the blocks about shoulder, shoulder width apart, place your palms together, then walk, your knees back so that the knees are under the hips. And then begin to press in and press back slightly, taking your hips slightly back so you start to feel some lengthening 
but rather than sinking a lot of times the the rib thrust the the ribs just want to fall through so you feel like oh yes i'm getting a really big stretch well see if you can pull those lower ribs in and an easy way to do that is to sniff hard or imagine that you're laughing <laughs> and then when you you feel those ribs pop in hold those in and feel that stretch and so you'll feel that this is working in the shoulders working the core breathing all right and then come back up press yourself out of that and do a little shake out and then moving the blocks to the side step your right foot forward and come down you can come from a tabletop if you like come to the tabletop step your right foot forward in between the feet and if you don't have a block you can step or um, you can take your left hand a little bit off to the side maybe off the side of your mat and you'll bring your right hand to on top of your right leg now it can be nice to have the block so if you have the block go ahead and put that left hand on the block so it gives you just a little bit more height and then from here straighten your right arm and then just allow it to come forward and then back and forward and back sort of a gentle mindful pendulum swing just loosening up the arm and the shoulder all right and then bring your right hand again to the middle of the chest and you're going to again open feel that twist and down twist and down and again, this is gonna be a smaller movement than you might be used to. It's getting into a smaller, a little more hidden, less thought about area. Although I think generally when we do think about it, we think about it in a, oh, it's feeling tight, it's feeling stuck. So hopefully this will help unlock things. Let's do one more twist, opening out, and then coming down, bringing your hands down to either side, coming back into table position. If you want to sit back into child's pose for just a moment, feel free to do that. And then step your left foot through. And again, bring that hand, uh, your right hand now off to the side. And if you'd like to have the block there, that's okay. Bring your left hand to on top of the left thigh and then straighten the left arm and begin to create that gentle smooth pendulum swing just feeling how hopefully pleasant that movement feels it's going to be a different size for everybody so just be mindful of what you're feeling and what your shoulders and arms and body are needing today all right so then bring your left hand on the middle of your chest and we'll again we'll gently create that twist coming from almost like we're just coming from the palm of the hand and then down like we're showing the back of the palm of the hand to someone who's next to us feeling that in between the shoulder blades remembering to not hold your breath we'll do this one more time twist and then down and then move that block off to the side and come down to all fours and curl your toes under and then come into downward dog i'm just going to move this blanket out of the way for a moment and so once you're in downward dog go ahead and walk your dog out just loosening up the legs 
and then go ahead and walk your feet a little bit in, a little bit closer towards your hand, and then step your feet a little bit wider. This is not like you were gonna do a standing forward bend, so it doesn't have to be really wide. Maybe just step an inch or so off of the mat. And then we are going to, keeping that press, keeping the activeness in the arms and shoulders. So again, pressing in, pressing your hands in so you create that space in the shoulders instead of like sinking in. So creating some space. Then take your right hand and reach it over towards your left foot. And if, you're, if it happens to be that your toes touch your your toes right there. You don't have to touch, this is not a toe touch exercise. We're just reaching. So if they're right there, then maybe you just reach a little bit past, but see if you can keep your body still and straight and just feel that extension through the shoulder blade area. And then come back, reset your hands, and then take the left side, reach towards the right. And then reset, and then reach with the right. You're gonna feel that in between, like we did with the threading the needle before. Imagine that you're trying to touch something way beyond your foot. Reset. So do these a few more times. So once more, each side, reach. And reach and then bring those feet back in again if you like you can do a little walking the dog take a breath or two more in downward dog or go ahead and come down to child's pose for a second come down and then stepping forward through with your right foot coming up into a higher lunge this time and pressing that right foot into the floor to create a stability. So we don't wanna be sinking far into this lunge. This is just, we're creating a stable base. So once you feel that stability, that right foot pressing in, bring the arms out in front of you and keep the ribs down again, like so you make that <laughs> tightening here. Bring the, rib, uh, the arms out in front of you, palms touching. And so we have the right leg out in front of us. So with the left hand, we're going to slide it across, down, or up the, the right arm and across the chest as if we were stringing a bow. I'm just going to show you on this other side so you can see what my arm is doing. So just imagine an elasticity, creating that twist again just in the top part so you don't want to take the whole thing you want to just twist from the top and then as you extend back out see if you can take that left hand and reach it a little bit further than the right and then again pull pull that bow feeling that twist and then with resistance extend reach 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 feeling this feeling that space in between the shoulder blades and again, pull and extend, extend, extend. And once more. And extend, extend, extend. And let that go. Come down, come down for a moment. If you wanna do a little wiggling about, that's fine. Coming back up. Come back to table pose, step the left foot through, and raising up into the slightly higher lunge, you're gonna press that left foot into the ground, and finding that stability. Ribs are down, arms come out in front of you, palms touch, and then with your right hand this time, Bring it back towards your armpit as if you were pulling a bow and then bringing the arm forward and this time see if you can reach the right hand past the left. And then again, slowly sliding the hand and arm, seeing if you can keep the twist just 
in the thoracic spine. Reaching, reaching, reaching. Pulling back. Extending, we'll do this one more time. If you try this again on another, uh, on a replay, you can see if extending the arm feels okay for you. But if you feel pinching, then don't come past this armpit area. And so bring that arm back out, reach, 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 and relax. Coming back to table pose, curl the toes under and press back into child's pose. Once, or excuse me, not into child's pose, into downward dog. And then coming back down, bring your knees down to the floor. You can sit back into child's pose. And then we're going to revisit our little block, almost armpit stretch again. So if you have those blocks, set them out in front of you. Come forward, bring the elbows to the blocks, bring your palms together, bring your knees back a bit so that your knees are more under your hips. And go ahead and laugh a little bit, <laughs> suck in those lower ribs, and then allow your hips to extend back a little bit and feel the stretch without letting your ribs thrust forward. Taking a few breaths here. And then pressing the elbows in, coming back in a little bit closer. Move those off to the side. Curl your toes under again, sink those hips back, and again, bring the forearms down. We're again revisiting this first thing that we did here with the forearms down on the floor. Bring your right hand to the middle of the chest. Again, pressing into the, the left forearm and elbow to create that space. And then twist and down. And what you can do here this time as you twist, and come down. It's just notice, does it feel different than the first time we did it? Does it maybe feel a little bit less sticky? Slowing the movement down. Once more, open out to the side. And then come back down. All right, reset the right forearm down, sinking the forearm and the elbow into the ground, rising up out so you've got some nice space in the shoulder, and then place your left hand in the middle of the chest. And then slowly, mindfully, checking in with that in between the shoulder blade area, open up, and then curl back down. Open up and curl back down. Open and curl. Again, checking in, noticing what things feel like. It's okay if you can't perceive a difference. Just continue to check in with yourself. We'll do this once more. Opening and then curling back in. Letting that arm back down, uncurl the toes. And we're just going to, you can sit back on your heels. You might like to have a, a blanket there if that feels comfortable. Find whatever position feels comfortable for you. And let's just take a few breaths. Tuning in, noticing how we feel now. In particular, noticing the chest, the upper back, the shoulders, maybe even the neck. Give your neck 
a little experimental moving around. We haven't directly focused on the neck, but it might feel a little bit looser because everything is connected. So gently find your way up to a standing position. And I'm going to scoot my mat back just slightly. Okay, so find a standing position and just let it be a comfortable stance. So you might pick up your foot, pick up each foot, find the right place for you. It might be about hip width, it might be about shoulder width. So just give yourself a little jiggle here, <laughs> tuning in, just finding yourself now in a standing plane. We've been on the ground for a while, so come on up. All right, now begin to tune into your feet. See if you can bring your awareness back towards your heels without tipping over. So you wanna to try to keep your toes on the ground, but see if you can direct your attention and your weight back into your heels a bit. And then see if you just slightly let your hips drift forward so you're feeling now a little bit more over your toes. And you'll feel how that feels unsteady. But so start to bring your weight back over your heels, your hips back over your heels, and you'll start to feel more stable. So start to feel that place where you feel, it almost just feels like everything falls into place because it's as if the bones are sort of stacking themselves in the, the correct architectural way that they were meant to so that you have a steady base. And you might even try closing your eyes and noticing how does that change things for you? Does you feel a little bit of a sway? And it's okay if you feel a little bit of a sway and you want to just play with that. Because right now we're going to start to experiment with some balance. So you know, lack of balance, lack of stability can feel a little bit unsafe, but we're just right here, probably in our living rooms. <laughs> and uh, if you would like, you can have a chair or something nearby, or maybe you might be next to a wall, but we're not gonna be doing anything that won't, you know, you'll, you have the safety of just being right here. You're not on the edge of a cliff or anything like that. So it's just a way of um, challenging your nervous system a little bit in the safety of your own home. So again, checking with, in with your eyes closed, that can change things, sometimes make it a little bit more unsteady. But again, just see if you can focus in on those heel bones and find the steadiness right there. All right, open your eyes again. And again, find that steady feeling over the heels. And so now we can take it to our first challenge. And so that challenge is going to be, can you start to come up onto your toes? And so again, here, if you start to feel unbalanced or anything, all you have to do is come right back down, just bring your heels back down to the floor. So start to raise up on to your toes. <laughs> and if you feel those wobbles, that's okay, don't fight them. So we wanna have that, we want to have the whole body involved. And so if you've ever watched slow motion stuff of like if a cat, you know, jumps, if an animal jumps from a really high height, <laughs> you'll see how it like counterbalances and everything in order for it to land on its feet, you know. So we're hopefully not going to have to land on all fours, but we do want to challenge things so <laughs> so one of my challenges is standing on my toes trying to balance and talk to you at the same time so that's something different <laughs> so that's a challenge you can also see if you bend your knees a little bit how does that does that change things i think it just changed things for me a little bit so it can send the weight back a little bit more so then maybe straighten up and see, like, whoa, I feel all wobbly. Okay, but I'm going to sink down a little bit. And as soon as you start to feel like you're good at whatever you're doing, 
maybe take the challenge up a little bit more. So now we're on our toes and see if, so here's the, maybe the first challenge. Is your weight all the way over to your pinky toes? It probably is. So see if you can direct a little bit more weight into the midline, into those big toes. So that's where those warm-ups that we did are gonna kind of come in to help. You might feel this a little bit in your calves later on, but that's not a bad thing because we're gonna help all those little stability muscles. Whenever you need to, feel free to come down. If you need to shake out your feet, feel free. Okay, so again, if you feel like, okay, I feel good, I don't know, I'm, I'm speaking for you. If you feel like you're feeling good, then can you close your eyes? Woo! <laughs> and so here's where this is a nervous system challenge. It's a little bit of a <laughs> brain exercise. And also you're probably gonna laugh and that's always a good thing. <laughs> so, okay, so <laughs> there's that. All right, come back down, bring your heels down, shake those feet out, reconnect in with the feet. Notice, I always feel, wow, it feels a lot easier to stand. <laughs> I feel that comfort and stability. I feel the heels, I feel the support. Okay, this might be enough for you. If you want, you can just kind of watch and see and then you can build, you can keep watching this and trying more but if you'd like, you can try a little bit more. So we've tried feet on the ground. We've tried the toes up. Let's try one foot at a time. So I'm going to come over onto, let's see, come over, pick a leg. I'm gonna come over onto, this is my right leg. And so sucking the hip in a bit. So I'm now stacking my weight again over that heel over everything so stacking everything up rather than pushing out to the side so this is not unbalanced this is not balanced so see if you can bring that hip in creating some space and here you can just lift the toes up just a little bit you don't have to do anything super fancy so checking in with this and again this might be right now i feel like this is kind of easy for me for the moment. <laughs> so then I could try, <laughs> spoke too soon. All right, so then I could try to close my eyes. So see, what does closing your eyes do? And again, you may need to bring your foot down and that's okay, you might need to open your eyes. Again, remember, you can move those arms all around. All right, so if you feel steady in any of these things, we could have both feet on the ground. What happens if you look up and then look back, then look over to the side? And back and then over to the other side back up again so there's a million different ways we can challenge ourselves because it's almost like we don't want to get good I know in the past I had learned to focus on one spot so that I can create a specific shape but you know what real world balance and stability isn't really about creating one shape so you can definitely do the one shape but as you might notice, if you are standing on this one leg, we're really strengthening this. And every time we move a little bit, move that other leg around, move that leg that's in the air, see how that goes. We're challenging, we're, we're working, we're feeling the core because the core is going to help us with the stability. So you can move all these different ways. I kind of like to pretend like I'm, a, like I'm an ice skater. Don't judge me on my form here, but it is just kind of fun. I am in Florida and I don't experience slipping on ice very much. The closest I might get is maybe being on my sock feet on the, the kitchen floor and slipping a little bit. But, I, you know, you feel that kind of rush of just energy and adrenaline. And so this can be something to help challenge, help build things up. All right, so let's come back down. All right, <laughs> again, remember to laugh and just have fun with it. And so come over to your other side. This is again, my left now. And so kind of bringing your hip in. So now all the weight is gonna be stacked up on that one side and then lift your toes up and begin your challenge. So maybe you close your eyes. Maybe just standing on one leg is challenge enough. It's gonna, it, it could change on the day. 
you know, I, uh, so just experiment. And so let's see, you can close your eyes. You can open your eyes and look up, look over to the side, look over to the other side, maybe look behind you. <laughs> Woo. Again, remembering that all you have to do is bring that foot down. But if you really feel unsteady, have a chair or something nearby. And then again, play with different positionings. What happens when you move your body through space? All right, winding this up. And then bringing your feet back down. All right. So we've tried all this with relatively flat ground. Now I'm on my mat on carpet, so that makes it a little bit, um, I guess a little bit less stable than if you were on tile or hardwood floor. But if you were looking for another challenge, the next thing is to bring a blanket like a folded up blanket and it doesn't have to, you know it doesn't have to be very big if you have a smaller blanket maybe you fold it up a little bit more you could even use you could probably use the box but i think a cushion or a blanket is good because also it has a little there's a little unsteadiness to it so we're going to try those things on your unsteady surface so first just come to a standing position, find that stability there. Checking in with the heel bones. You may notice things feel a little bit different. Find the stability there. And again, you know, you can look up, look over to the side, to the other side. You could close your eyes, maybe look up, look to the side, look to the other side, look down. Okay, so try the stability there when you've found that. And you know, if you're watching this on the replay later, you can always take a pause if you want to take a little bit more time. And now let's see if we can raise up on our toes. <laughs> All right, <laughs> so <laughs> finding the stability there, seeing if you can bring those toes in down towards the, towards the floor. For me, it feels a little bit easier actually on the blanket because I feel like there's a little bit of support. So if you had a little bit of soreness maybe, or just a stretchy kind of a feeling when you were on the flat ground, I feel for me, it feels a little bit more cradled. And I don't know, your mileage may vary. <laughs> Woo, all right. <laughs> so playing with that a little bit, if you, this might be enough of a challenge. You can also shut your eyes <laughs> or look up, maybe with your eyes open, look over to the side, look over to the other side. All right, and then bring those heels back down and reconnect. Finding the grounded stability, stacking the bones. Hmm. Okay, you remember probably what comes next. So move off to one side and keep one foot on your unstable surface. Lean in, start to stack. So bring that hip in so you have the, the stacked and then lift your foot off. And then again, play. Play with balance, play with stability. What happens as you move? What happens if you close your eyes? If you feel, sometimes you might feel a little bit of a, ah, kind of a feeling, but just know it's okay. You're not going to 
fall and hurt yourself, all you have to do is just put your foot down. All right, and then coming back, bringing that to center, and then stepping over maybe to the other side of your cushion or blanket and stacking, stacking things up, taking those toes, feet off the floor, and exploring on this other side. Whenever, remember, whenever something feels like, oh, I've got this, this is so easy, what can you do to maybe challenge yourself a little bit more? <laughs> Having fun with it. And even when you're having fun, your brain and nervous system are really working. And so I find myself feeling calmer after doing something kind of like this, because it's like a, a little brain puzzle. All right, go ahead and step off of that. You can move your blanket or cushion off to the side. Just find that steady position, find a comfortable standing position. Again, close your eyes if it feels comfortable. And give yourself a bit of a scan. From head to toe, just checking in at the feet, coming all the way up the legs, to the knees, the thighs, the hips, the spine, the abdomen, the chest, the shoulders, the arms, the hands, back up to the shoulders of the neck, to the head, relaxing the forehead, relaxing the jaw. And gently make your way down to the floor and we'll come down to our belly for just a moment coming down to the belly and again stretching your arms out in front of you and stretching stretching your fingers to the wall in front of you and your toes to the wall behind you feeling that length and then making a little pillow with your hands so you can rest either your chin or your forehead just go ahead and bend your knees and windshield wiper your legs from side to side breathing and then Bring your hands beneath your shoulders, gently pressing yourself up into tabletop, and then setting your heels back down, or excuse me, setting your seat back down towards your heels. Come to stretch down into child's pose. Maybe making a pillow with your hands underneath the forehead, finding whatever position feels right for you. Taking a few breaths. Then bring yourself, gently sit yourself back up. Turn to sit on your seat and bring, bend one leg up, bring it in front of you and see if you can take a hold of, let's see, this is, let's see, if you're facing me, then imagine that I'm your mirror. So this is gonna be your left leg. So holding your left leg, holding with your right hand, hold the ankle and with your left hand, hold the knee. And then just give it a little bit of a rock, as if this was your little shin baby. 
You might bring it up a little bit closer, maybe down a little bit lower. Just give a gentle rock. And then let that go, give a little shake and bend your right leg. And with your left hand, hold the ankle. With your right hand, hold the knee. And again, just do a gentle rock. Maybe starting low, coming up high. And then gently let that go, release that, shake the arms out, and let's roll down gently onto our backs. Coming down, making any last final movement. Perhaps that could just be stretching your arms over your head, with your fingertips to the wall behind you and the toes towards the wall in front of you. Just lengthening out, wriggling, finding that length. Again, doing this in your own time. So making those movements that you need to feel ready to just come down into Shavasana. Finding a comfortable position for the back of the head, for the shoulders, for the hips, for the ankles. The arms are outstretched about at a 45 degree angle with the palms facing up towards the ceiling. Something that can kind of be nice is you can take a folded blanket or a cushion and place it over your torso to add a little bit of weight. That can sometimes feel a little bit more comforting. Breathing. Starting to feel yourself sinking deeply into the mat. We'll do a scan, this time starting with the head and the face. So allow the forehead to smooth out. Allow all the muscles in the face to start to relax, smooth out. Checking in around the eyebrows, the eyes, the nose, the mouth. See if you can let your jaw just soften, maybe give it a little bit of a wiggle side to side, and then letting your lips close, but then let your teeth be slightly apart. Allow your ears to relax the scalp to be smooth, the neck is long and relaxed. Coming down to the shoulders, letting any tension evaporate. Moving your scan down your upper arms, to your elbows, to your forearms, wrists, hands and fingers. Just let the tension dissolve. And coming back to your shoulders, tune in to the upper back and chest. We placed a lot of focus there today. Notice how it's feeling. If there's any remaining stress or discomfort, See if you can just allow with your attention to just let it evaporate. Taking your tension, excuse me, your attention down your torso, scanning the abdomen, the pelvis, the mid back, the low back, the hips, the butt. Feeling everything grow heavy and quiet.
coming down back into the hips, taking that scan down through your thighs, front and back, into the knees, into the shins, to the calves, the ankles, those strong, steady heels, the feet and the toes. Letting all the tension go. You might even have the visual that all the tension could just drain out of the fingertips and the toe tips. Letting all tension subside. Your nervous system is growing calm. With every breath, you sink a little deeper into relaxation. Now begin to allow your breathing to deepen, your awareness to deepen. Starting to become aware, more aware of sounds in the room. Begin to wiggle your fingers and toes, maybe drawing your thumbs across your fingertips. Starting to bring that movement into the hands, feet, wrists, ankles. Maybe gently starting to bend your knees. If you have a blanket over top of you, you can slide it off to the side. And when you're ready, go ahead and roll over onto your favorite side and take a moment. And then gently begin to press yourself back up to a seated position. Finding a comfortable seated position. Bring your hands and cross your hands on top of your heart space in the center of your chest. Taking a few breaths, let your eyes close for a moment. Taking a few breaths into this heart space. Knowing that you can come back at any time and bring your hands over your heart and check in and remember this feeling that you're feeling right now. This peace, this quiet, feeling some gratitude for yourself, for your loved ones. May we be free of suffering May we have physical happiness. May we have mental happiness. May our hearts be at peace. Allowing a smile to come to your face. You can let your eyes open. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you for moving your body, breathing your breath, and I hope to see you next time. Namaste.